Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Minister Cynthia Forbes. We invite you to tune in to the Tobago Inspirational Network for the message of hope. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me welcome you to the message of hope right at this time. And we will go straight into the word of God after prayer because time is of essence. Hallelujah. It's good to be here with you again this morning. So welcome viewing audience to the message of hope. We want to pray. Father God, I give you praise and I give you thanks for your goodness. Thank you for life and health and strength. Thank you for God for your goodness, your mercy, your love, your grace, your kindness and your faithfulness to us. Thank you for another day to stand, oh God, hallelujah, in your presence to share your word to all of us. My God, your word is important. Hallelujah, Jesus, you said your word is spirit and they are life. Hallelujah, and you watch over your word, oh God, to make it good in our lives. Lord, let your word go forth today. In Jesus' name, without let, without hindrance, let not the enemy, oh God, snatch the word today from our hearts. Hallelujah, let it continue to resonate in our spirits. Oh God, that souls would be saved. Hallelujah, people would be built up and strengthened and encouraged. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we've been looking into the word of God from Matthew chapter 13. I think we want to close it off today where we were looking at unbelief. Hallelujah. How unbelief hinders God's blessing. Amen. It's like putting a plug uh, into the tap, the, your tap in your home, where, uh, and you stop the water from flowing. Yes? Hallelujah. We, unbelief stops the blessing of God. Nothing gets true to God. He does not respond to unbelief. Hallelujah. That's why we are told, have the faith of God. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. Have his kind of faith. Hallelujah. So we were looking at uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 53 to 58, and especially verse 58. Hallelujah. Where it tells us there, and he, Jesus, did not many mighty works there in his city, in Nazareth, in Galilee, and the surrounding areas, because of their unbelief. Notice the word there. Whose unbelief? Their unbelief. Whose unbelief? Our unbelief. God will not do mighty works for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of our unbelief. We have to get out of the realm of unbelief. Hallelujah. And get into the realm. Hallelujah. Of belief. The realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We want to look at some of the things that unbelief does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are some of the things that unbelief does? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we, when we talk about unbelief, we, we are looking, we are thinking of unbelief, not believing God, his word, his promises, his son, Jesus Christ. Come on. Unbelief with respect to God and all that concerns God. Hallelujah. To get anything from God, we got to believe. Hallelujah. Whether it is salvation or healing, deliverance or victory, you name it. Hallelujah. We've got to believe our God. The Apostle Creed begins with, I believe in God the Father. Come on. We, we, some, sometimes we repeat that, that Apostle's Creed. And it, we, we say it because we know it. But it's not a reality. And we have to make believing in God a reality. Hallelujah. Some of the things we, we say, even sometimes we pray. We pray panic prayer and we pray unbelieving prayer. We, we pray and, and when we get up off from our knees, we still wonder if God will hear and answer. He hears. Hallelujah. He hears. But he will hear the believing prayer. We've got to believe. Believe what we say. Jesus says that in his word. So one of the things um, unbelief does, it produces fear. Hallelujah. It produces fear. And if you look into Mark chapter 4 and verse 40, 
when Jesus and his disciples they were at sea and suddenly a storm came upon them. And the thing is, while the storm was going on, Jesus was asleep. Hallelujah. Jesus was in the boat. Disciples were in the boat. And let your life and my life like be, be like the boat. Hallelujah. If Jesus is in us and the storms of life will come against us, they will come. Hallelujah. Storms, what a financial, physical, social, emotional, mental, storms will come against us. Things that we don't prepare for, we didn't prepare for, yes, will come against us. The storms of life will assail us. Hallelujah. And listen to me. If we are honest, we will, we will say yes when they come. We become fearful. We become fearful and sometimes panic. We panic just as the disciples did while they were on the boat. And who, who likes storms? We don't like storms. No hurricanes. <laughs> I went through Hurricane Flora. Most of us went through that if you were, if you were born around that time. Yes? And as a matter of fact, this month is the, is the month uh, 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 when 30th of September is when the hurricane, hurricane Flora hit Tobago. Nobody likes storms. When I hear of storms and hurricanes, I say, look, you just go and die in the sea. I don't want it here and I don't want it anywhere. Storms. Nobody likes storms. But sad to say, they will come against us in whichever form, physical or financial things, you know, will come. Even the natural storm, storms of wind and hurricane will come against us. And we become fearful. Yes, we become fearful. And we panic, just like the disciples. And they went to Jesus, they wake him up. Ah, come on, come on, master, look, we are perishing. You don't care. You are sleeping in the boat. And you, you don't, you're not even coming to see what's happening to us. And Jesus is on the boat. He knows the storm is there. But they became fearful, not trusting, not relaxing and with Jesus on the boat. You know, it's easy to say Jesus is in the boat, um, so relax. Um, yeah, it's easy to say that. Easier said than done. Yeah, but we got to come to that place uh, in spite of what may come against us. Let's hold on to the word of God. Let's hold on to God. Let's hold on to his unchanging hands. Come on. Hallelujah. And let's stand strong. Let's stand firm. Let's stand strong in our God. He's able and he's well able, whatever storm it might be, yes, to bring us through. And when we go before him in prayer, let us not panic, yes? Let us not panic and become fearful. And when we, get, when we pray, yeah, we still get up from our knees wondering if God hear and wonder if he will answer. Yes, I've been through that. And I know many of you out there have been through that. You're still wondering, we pray, yet we're not believing that he will hear and he will answer. But if it's an unbelieving prayer, it will not be answered. He responds to faith in him. He responds to trust and confidence in him. Yes, we got to trust our God. We got to believe our God. And for those who have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as personal savior and Lord, you got to believe that he can save you. He will save you. Yes, you got to believe, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever means you, whosoever means me, believe, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So much so Jesus had to say, how is it that you have no faith? <laughs> yeah. How is it you don't believe I am right here and you, you can't believe that I am able to stop this storm? Come on. You, you're panicking and you're rushing to me to wake me up. Where is your faith? Come on, you can put that storm to rest. Jesus got up and he spoke. And the Bible tells us there was a great calm. Is there a storm in your life today? Is there a problem, a situation that you cannot handle? Listen, we cannot handle storms you know, in, on, in our own strength. We prepare when we hear a storm is coming, we make preparations. But we cannot stop the storm. We cannot handle storms. Yes, 
the natural. But what about those storms that come against us from day to day in the marriage, with children, on the job, in our health, with our finances, especially in this pandemic time? Hallelujah! How are you coping? Is God on your side? Do you have him on your side? Is he in your boat? Hallelujah. How are you making it without God on your side? Yes. They cried out in panic and in fear because of the storm that came on them suddenly. You know, sometimes some things come upon us suddenly. We didn't prepare for that. And we, we start to fret. We fret and we carry on. Uh, yeah, even believers. We carry on and we fret. I didn't prepare for this. And, and we carry on and we fret. Yes? Take it to the Lord in prayer, believing that he is able. So one of the things unbelief produces, it produces fear. Yes? It produces fear. Not only fear, it also, hallelujah, it hinders. Well, again, it hinders. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It hinders our prayer. It hinders our prayer. Um, well, as I was reading this book, um, see, on faith, master key of faith, hallelujah. It, well, we know that um, we, we don't pray as we ought to pray. <laughs> because why? We, we don't pray, we don't get in, we don't get in with God. It hinders because we don't believe God will hear and God will answer. We do not believe that. Hear what Jesus said in Mark 4 and 24. What things soever, so that's a kind of prayer. What things soever you desire. What do you desire today? Salvation, the greatest desire in your life full should be salvation. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not to seek wealth and fame and these things first. Put God first in your life. Put God first in your home. Put God first in your, in your marriage. Put God first in your business. In your education. Hallelujah. What things soever you desire when you pray, not if you pray. So it means we ought to pray. We shouldn't be praying. Not when. He says when you pray. What things soever you desire when you pray. If we could only believe this. Sometimes we, 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 we have... We, we, we want to do certain things. We want to start a business. We want to do something. We want to study. We want to whatever. Do something new, something different. And we become afraid. We don't believe we could make it. We don't believe God would give us the money to start the business. We don't believe God will give us the money to, to, to give us the land, to buy the land or, or to get the house. Come on. Hallelujah. Or to go to university to study somewhere. Yes, we do not believe. And because of that, unbelief hinders. We, we pray unbelieving prayer. It hinders our prayer because we don't believe. Here Jesus is saying, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. We have to see that we have it. The eye of faith, the eye of belief. We got to see that. We, we have to see. You have to see your, your, your certificate, your, your doctorate. You got to see the house. You got to see the shape of the house, the size of the house, the number of rooms in the house. You got to see the land where it's at. You got to see it. You have to see uh, your health come, come back to you. You got to see it with the eye of faith, with the eye of belief. Not natural. You see, naturally we look at the things natural and, and because we look at, we, instead of looking at the power and looking at the size of our God, we look at the size of our challenges and our problems. We have to use the eye of faith. Hallelujah. The eye of faith to see the thing before you get it. <laughs> Gotta see it before you receive it. See it with the eye of faith, the eye of belief. Hallelujah. Because he's saying, what things ever you desire? What is it you desire today? Child of God or the others. What do you desire? Hallelujah. Your greatest desire, say, should be that desire to be saved, to get yourself ready. Hallelujah. For the coming of the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What things ever you desire when you pray? Not if you pray. Because Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Hallelujah. When you pray, believe. 
that you have, re that you receive them, those things that you believe you receive them. You have them in your house, you have the land, you start to build, you see the color, the paint, how you, how you, how you will decorate your, your place, what the, the furniture you will put in. You, you're seeing everything as though it is already there. That is what he means. Believe that he have received them. You don't have the money in your hand yet, yet you're not seeing it physically, but in the spirit, with the eye of faith, with the eye of belief, Yes, you have it. You have it. <laughs> he was living. No faith is the substance of things hoped for. He is saying, faith or belief is saying, I have the thing. It's the substance of what I'm looking forward to. I have it, even though I've not seen it physically or materially. Yeah, you believe until it materializes. Yes, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And ye shall have them. And ye shall have them. Believe. That's a key word. In everything that we do, with, as far as God is concerned, we got to believe. Got to believe. John 14, 14 says, If you shall ask anything, that's another prayer, the anything prayer. Hallelujah. If you shall ask anything in my name, Jesus is saying, anything in my name, I will do it. Yes, he's saying that's a, that's a promise. We got to believe that. He's faithful, that promise. Yes, he's faithful. Listen to me. You know, we like to put time and limit to God. If I give it by so and so, me, me, and nobody. No, 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 no. You see, if I can get it by next week, that's it. No. Do not put limits on God. Notice here, he didn't give any time and say you'll get it tomorrow or it will happen next week. No time limit at all. All we have to do, believe. Keep believing and to receive it. Do not stop. Men ought to always to pray and not to faint. Don't give up because you didn't get it the time you or we, let me say, the time we, we decide we will have it. And even from, from whence it will come. You know, sometimes we, we think God is going to answer my prayer from the east. No, don't, don't tell him where to do that. He's not our puppet. Pull his string and he pops anyway. No, no, no. Leave it. Pray and believe. And then we receive. You think he's coming from this? He will come from the west. You think he'll come from the west? He'll come from the north. You think he'll come from the north? He'll come from the west. Yes? Hallelujah. So that he gets the glory. So that he gets the glory. And not you say, I know you would have used this. I know I would have get it then. I know. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> all we have to do when we pray, we keep believing until the thing materializes before us. Amen. Mark eleven twenty four tells us, Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe again, the key word, the key word, not unbelief. Unbelief will not bring anything to us. Believe that you receive them. Got to believe you receive it with the eye of faith. Hallelujah. Believe you receive it. See your doctorate certificate. <laughs> Whatever it is you believe in God for. Your health. See yourself being healed. And you're walking and you whatever the issue is, even today in the, in the, with the pandemic. How you see that thing fall off your life? See you getting off your bed? See you getting out of the hospital? See yourself getting back home? Hallelujah. Remember, the problem is not with God or his son. The problem is with mankind, our belief system, how we believe. Yes? It's not we got, it was because of their belief. He couldn't do many miracles in his city. Yes, not, it has no problem with God. There's no shortage of power with God. Hallelujah, he's still able. All the sin in the world has not canceled out his ability. No, 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 or his power, or his wisdom, his knowledge. Hallelujah. No amount of sin or unbelief for that matter has canceled out his power 
to save, to heal, to deliver. Yes? Hasn't cancelled out anything. So it's saying, believe that he received them and you shall have them. Believe you receive them. See your, what your, you desire with the eye of faith until it materializes. You know, we give up too easily and too quickly on our prayers. And we give up. We walk away. Hallelujah. As somebody sang, don't give up on the brink of your miracle. Don't give up. Keep pressing in there. As somebody talk about push, pray until something happens. Change will come. Believe change will come. In your home, in your marriage, believe, don't give up. Don't go into divorce. God is able. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't walk away. God is able. Hallelujah. Yes? Another thing that prayer, uh, unbelief does, it defeats the purpose of God. It de defeats just like in, in chapter 13, uh, 55 to 58. He couldn't do many miracles in his area because of their unbelief. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Another thing um, unbelief does, it brings condemnation. It brings condemnation. John 3 and 18. Hallelujah. Jesus and Nicodemus. Hallelujah. When he told Nicodemus, God did not send him to condemn the world, but to save. And he that believes on him is not condemned. But he that does not believe is condemned already. Where are you? Have you believed? Have you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ? If you have believed, you are not under condemnation. If you do not believe and you will not believe, you continue in unbelief, you continue in condemnation. Hallelujah. Yes, because you have not believed on the name, in the name of the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, your Savior, your Lord, your Deliverer, your Healer. Come on, yours and mine. Hallelujah. If you do not believe the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't believe in him, the scripture tells us, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, you shall be saved. We got to believe him for whatever we need to receive from him. If you do not believe, you are in condemnation. You are under condemnation. That's the scripture. Hallelujah. John 3, 18. Hallelujah. He that believes on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Already condemned. Cannot condemn the condemned. Already condemned. Yes? Get out of condemnation and accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Hallelujah. Believe on him and be saved today. Hallelujah. From the wrath to come. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He had not believed because he had not believed in the name of of the only begotten Son of God. There's no blessing in any form. No, no blessing in any form emanates from unbelief. No, no blessing. Hallelujah. And God responds to true faith, trust, confidence, and belief in him. They're all similar synonyms, yeah? Use one or the other, yes? God responds to that. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Unbelief also prevents God from working miracles of healing. In Bethsaida, yes? And going through those cities, Jesus upbraided them because of their unbelief. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because of people's unbelief in our nation and the nations and around the world, People's lives are not changed because people do not believe God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus at various times put unbelievers out from where he was going to, uh, for example, Jairus' home. He put the, those who were laughing and unbelievers, he put them out of the house right before he performed the miracle on Jairus' daughter. There was a, a deaf man 
um, that came to Jesus. He took him out of the city because the unbelievers, 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 unbelief hinders or prevents working, God working miracles of healing. Not that God is powerless, but the problem is with our unbelief. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name. Hallelujah. It robs us of power. Remember when the disciples, the man who had his son and carried him to the disciples, Jesus was on the mountain. Hallelujah. And those who were on the, on the plains there, yes, and they could not cast out the demon. And, and several people come to, to us with, with all kinds of problems and, and they live without being, without help to their unbelief as well. Their unbelief as well. They have to come believing in order, they got to meet the criteria. Yes? Have to believe. And then, because of a lack of power, unbelief on our I don't think I could do that, you know. I don't think I able must say the pastor alone, the pastor could do that. And we're looking for other people. God has given us the power over all the power of the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It causes also reasoning. It causes us to reason. Use our reasoning abilities instead of believing God. How do we overcome? Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, Jesus says in, in John 14, about 4, 7 or 6 there, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will. So we got to get to the word of God. The Bible tells us faith or belief, confidence in God comes by hearing the word. And for us, we got to read Get into the word of God. Believe the word. As the more we read it, the more we, it gets into our spirit and our spirit accepts it. Come on. And belief, our belief system become changed. Yes? So from today, get into the word of God. If, you, if you've been slack as far as reading the word and getting into God's word, <laughs> Jesus says the words that speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Life giving. So we need to get into the word. If we want to get our belief system up, get it up, increase, get into the word and let the Holy Spirit teach us and give us what we need to continue to believe God our Father and his word and his promises. God bless you as we close off this around this time. Continue to view the message of hope every Wednesday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you as you get on your journey believing God, our Father. Amen. God bless you. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Minister Cynthia Forbes. We invite you to tune in to the Tobago Inspirational Network for the message of hope. 